Hi, my name is Stefan Frey, Research Analyst Director at Secunia. Today I will talk about the fundamental failure of endpoint security. Secunia is a leading provider of vulnerability intelligence and we have a free tool, the Secunia Software Personal Software Inspector PSI, that is used by more than 3 million users. So, What's the story about the security of endpoints based on empirical data that we gained in 2010 from anonymous scans from Secunia PSI? So first of all, what is PSI doing? PSI scans a Windows endpoint and enumerates all the programs installed and thereby identifies insecure programs, programs that are either end of life or that have some available patches missing. I delved into 2010 data from Secunia PSI and I will present in the following some of the results. First of all, what do you think? How many programs do you have installed on your personal computer, either at business or at home? And when I look into the data, we found that 50% of the users have more than 66 programs from more than 22 different vendors installed. So, this is quite a complex environment and not surprisingly, it's very hard to secure such an environment. As today we have no unified patch mechanism, this means that the user has to handle at least 22 different mechanisms to master them in order to keep his personal computer or his endpoint secure. So, this is the complexity. When we look at it from the cyber criminal's perspective, we could clearly say that the number of hosts in the internet times the number of vulnerabilities on those hosts, this is cyber criminal's opportunity. So the number of hosts today, we have about 2 billion internet users, which is about 28% penetration of the whole population of the earth. So it is clear that endpoints are a very juicy and attractive targets just because there are so many available. On the other hand, what's the number of vulnerabilities on those end hosts? In order to track a diverse set of users with different software portfolios, we built what we call the top 50 typical software portfolio. So I took the 50 most prevalent uh, programs we found with PSI, built this portfolio, and then we track the security state of this portfolio over the last years. What we found is an alarming trend. So this top 50 portfolio, which has 26 programs from Microsoft and 24 programs from third parties, which is non-Microsoft programs, from a total of 14 different vendors. So when we track this portfolio together with Windows XP as operating system, we found that the number of vulnerabilities in this typical PC has increased almost fourfold in the last three years. Or from 2009 to 2010, we tracked an increase in the number of vulnerabilities of over 71%. This is an alarming trend. More so, this is also an important trend because more than 80% of those vulnerabilities are either extremely or highly risky and they allow the attacker to gain control over the host from remote. So, we discovered an alarming and a relevant trend uh, with respect to end hosts. The question now is, yeah, who is the culprit? Where does this trend come from? When we dig deeper, we found that this trend is almost exclusively due to vulnerabilities to be found in third-party programs. When we break it down, this typical portfolio with Windows XP, 13% of the vulnerabilities are from the operating system. 18% of the vulnerabilities are found in the 26 Microsoft programs and the whopping 69% of all those vulnerabilities are found in the 24 uh, third-party programs. So this increase is almost exclusively due to vulnerabilities in third-party programs. When we look at it from the perspective of different operating systems, we see that the choice of operating system, be it Windows XP, be it Windows Vista or Windows 7, has almost no effect. So the number, the total number of vulnerabilities in 2010 would only have changed by less than 3%. We have an alarming trend with lots of vulnerabilities on the endpoint. If you compare that on how difficult it is to secure the endpoint. As we said, from 14 different vendors, we have 14 different update mechanisms. Now, to keep this endpoint up to date means you have to master 14 update mechanisms. With one update mechanism, which is Microsoft Update, you can patch the operating system, the 26 Microsoft programs, 
and thereby remediate 31% of all the vulnerabilities. On the other hand, you need to master an additional 13 different update mechanisms to patch the 24 uh, non-Microsoft third-party programs to remediate the remaining 69% of the vulnerabilities. So, this is a daunting task and we have to adjust our model a little bit. We said that from criminal's perspective, the opportunity is number of hosts, time, number of vulnerabilities. I would add the following. So for cyber criminals, the opportunity is the number of hosts times the number of vulnerabilities times the complexity to stay secure. So this complexity, as it is revealed by our data, also has a measurable effect on the security. When we look at the data and look at in average, how many insecure Microsoft programs or how many insecure third-party programs we find based on PSI, we see a very, very clear message. In average, less than 2% of the Microsoft programs are found insecure compared to between 6 and 12% of the third-party programs to be found insecure. Complexity to patch an endpoint has a clear and measurable effect on the security of the endpoints. Are we doomed? I don't think so. Because if we look deeper, we find that for 65% of those vulnerabilities, a patch is available at the day of disclosure. And if we go deeper, within 10 days of the disclosure of the vulnerability, 75% of all the vulnerabilities have a patch available. So, actually, we can do something. We can do a lot. So we cannot hide behind the threat of zero-day exploits. For 65% of the vulnerabilities, we can do something instantly and it is our responsibility. So if you look at this data in total, we see that Microsoft is still perceived as the primary attack vector. However, our data shows this is no more the case. It has shifted toward third-party programs. Cyber criminals are very adaptive and based on the complexity of patching, they will always find a large number of not optimally secured endpoints. So, basically cyber criminals, they don't need Microsoft vulnerabilities to own you. They take them if they have them, but they don't need them. They don't rely on them. Furthermore, cyber criminals don't need to invest into zero-day exploits. They will always find unpatched programs in large numbers to own your machine. So there's no need to invest either into own research or to buy precious zero-day vulnerabilities. If you go a little bit deeper, we know nowadays that uh, parameter defense like antivirus, IDS, IPS, there are numerous technologies that allow attackers to bypass them. Like attackers construct serial variants in large numbers to bypass signature-based detection engines. If we compare that to the patch, the most important message that we have is that one patch is better than thousands of signature updates because a patch remediates the root cause. So no matter what the attacker does, trying to hide or camouflage his attack, if you patch the vulnerabilities, there is no way the root cause is remediated, there's no way you can do it. So it changes the game. I would say, as our data tells us, 65% of the patches are available at the day of disclosure. There's a lot we can do. There's always a residual risk that we cannot do a lot about it, but there's no way or there's no reason to just ignore 65% of a very solid solution. Microsoft is still perceived as the primary threat, thereby we ignore third-party patching. It's like locking the front door while the back door is wide open. We consider patching a very important contributor to the security and patching should enjoy the same priority as firewalls, IDS, IPS and antivirus in order to heighten the security of endpoints. Thank you very much for your attention. If you're interested to measure your security state, download Secunia PSI from secunia.com slash PSI. Thank you and goodbye.